Okay, so this video is about task number, let me just get this out. Okay, task 11, day six, advent of cyber one. Now, this task is about analyzing or is a combination of analyzing Wireshark, packet analysis with Wireshark, plus conducting stego analysis. Stego analysis is the opposite of steganography. Steganography is hiding information within images. Stego analysis is extracting the information from the images. Okay, so here the three questions revolve around these concepts, Wireshark analysis and the stego analysis. So we have a download, we have a pickup file. We download this file and we start the analysis to answer the questions. So as you can see, the first question is asking what data was exfiltrated via DNS? So sometimes hackers would exfiltrate data or transfer data, steal data through DNS. We're required to find out what was stolen in the DNS. What did little Timmy want to be for Christmas? And this is a follow-up for this question. What was hidden within the file? This is steganography and stego analysis. All right, so here we have the packet file or the pickup file. As you can see, we have a lot of captured packets. So we can't just go through the packets one by one. So what we're gonna do here, we will just directly filter for DNS traffic. DNS, and here we have the DNS packets. Now, even here, we have to filter more, but the filter will be visual, right? We're not gonna apply any filter in the search box here. So basically, we have a pattern of data being exfiltrated through DNS. As you can see here, this is kind of uh, hex, right? Hex string, hex string. This is also hex, and this is also hex. So you have to, to know which one to look or to uh, deal with. So if we select this first one, right click, follow UDB streams. So here we have the hex string. Let's take this and decode it. So we have many ways to decode hex to SK. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to just use online tool cyber chef. So we drag from hex here and we put the input and we get the plain text string candy cane serial number eight four nine one okay now let's see another one so this is the same hex string as you can see it starts with four ends with one starts with four ends with one starts with four ends with one all the same right so the same data being exfiltrated with every packet so here we take this and we answer with it. And it turns out to be true. All right, now the next one, what did little Timmy want to be for Christmas? This is a bit tricky here. We have to find out, uh, we do have to dig more into packets and find more information about this question. So let's get back to the packets, see what we can do here. So I'm gonna cancel the folder. And as you can see, we have too many packets. So how do you find this information, right? So the question is asking about something to be found in plain text format. So we're not gonna look in the DNS, we're not gonna look into TCP, we have to look for, or we have to look in HTTP. So the HTTP traffic, we have, as you can see here, uh, a get request from this IP to this host, and we have you know, 200 OK, things like the web server is up. And as you can see, we have a file being downloaded, the Christmas list.zip. And we have another file called tryhackme.jpg has been downloaded. So here we have to find the details within these two files. If, of course, one of them. Now, how to, how to download these files? So basically, we're going to use the export objects, export HTTP. So we will download the files to our local machine. As you can see, we have the application, uh, the Christmas zip and zip file and the image. So save all to desktop. 
let's check them out. Check them out. Christmas list, dot zip, and we have the uh, image. All right then, so unzip now, unzip, Christmas. Password is required, fine. So we have to go through zip file, uh, zip file cracking. So there's a tool called fcrackzip. I'm sure most of you know that. So fcrackzip. So let's see the help menu. What are the options that we will use? So first we can use the brute force dash p option. And uh, we have to specify the methods. For the methods we have zero, one, two. So for this one, I'm gonna use the two, the method two, zip two, and what else we have to do is here, brute force, of course, and here dictionary, indicating that we will use a word list, and the word list will be uh, set by the option dash p. Okay, seems like everything is clear now. Now f drag zip dash brute force mode the method will be two dash t for dictionary and dash p the word list will be user you know that and specify the file christmas start cracking Possible password found December. December. So let's try with this password. Paste it. Indeed, the password worked, and we have files. So we have Christmas list D A N Christmas list dark Christmas list Kitty and Asho Christmas list Timmy. So let's get back to the question here. What did little Timmy? So we have to find it from here. So cat Christmas this Timmy. For Christmas, I would like to be a pen tester. So here go the answer. Last one, what was hidden within the file? So if you remember, we have a jpg file so they're asking what is hidden in this file so we have to use stick analysis so there is a tool called stick hide stick hide used to extract information from an image that is possibly or you know doubtedly contain hidden information so what are the options that we will use in this case let me look in the options so here as you can see the first one dash sf select a stick of file here we put the file that we suspect it contains information or the creator has used steganography in this file. So let's use that. Stick hard extract. Why I'm saying extract? Because the mode here will be extract. Extract data and dash sf. Try hack me. Passphrase. Now I know we don't have a password for this file, but we as a common sense, we would try with the password we have just found from here. Stick hide could not extract anything with that passphrase. All right, let's try something else without password. Root extracted data to Christmas monster.txt. So empty password worked. Now cat Christmas monster. So what's the question now? What was hidden within the file? RFC, ARP, all of that was hidden in the file. It is a text file, right? As you can see, text file was hidden within image file. So let me look at the answer formula, one word. So it's either this or this. Let me try this one. No, this one.
and work. So that was about day six. All right, so before we wrap up this video, I want just to refer you guys to this website, SSD Secure Disclosure. And this website, we're gonna open a new tab because I wanna tell you two items here on the site. The first one, as you can see here, SSD Secure Disclosure. Um, there are zero day vulnerability brokers that have been around since 2007. They are focused on getting security researchers the highest bounty for their findings in a very personal, quick manner. SSD deals with the hassle of communicating with vendors and disclosing findings with no additional fees, which is perfect for those who want to submit their findings about bugs, but they don't want to, their uh, identity to be exposed for whatever the reason. And of course, they don't want to deal with the um, uh, don't want to do the communication part with the vendor. So SSD Secure Disclosure takes this part on behalf of the researchers. Another part of this site is the advisor's archive. Now, you might see here, as you can see, the list of the uh, vulnerabilities and their associated exploits. Um, now, as you can see, you can browse their page, but the thing that caught my eye is this. So if they can example the first one, IBM, IAX, SMPD, ASN.1, OID, parsing stack overflow. So this is uh, a vulnerability in one of the IBM products. And the, the cool thing uh, about this uh, style here, as you can see, they put the vulnerability summary, the credit, as you can see, the researcher who have disclosed that, the affected versions, the response of the vendor, and the analysis. That's the cool part. Here's the proof of concept. What has caused the vulnerability? What triggered the vulnerability? What is the security misconfiguration? And of course, as you can see, the exploit code. So it's not only the exploit code. Most of the sites, they would list only the exploit code, right? And the vulnerability name or the weakness name or the CV name. But in the case of this site, it's very cool, very detailed explanation. And you can take it as a form of practice if you want to keep up with the latest uh, exploits, right? You want to you wanna take a look at this. I'm going to put the link of this site in the video description. So you want to take a look, whether you are a researcher, or you are just a learner or new into bug bounty, you can just uh, go to this site and find out more. All right then.